Is 2025 the year of agents? Well, the Wall Street Journal is already covering what big companies are using them for, so maybe. Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief. Right now in Las Vegas, the annual CES Consumer Electronics Show is happening, and I anticipate that there will be some interesting AI announcements from that event that we will cover later in the week. However, for today's episode, as we let those announcements come in a little bit more, I noticed something interesting in the Wall Street Journal. Yesterday, that publication published a piece in their CIO journal called How Are Companies Using AI Agents? Here's a look at five early users of the bots. You can tell the language is a little bit stuck in the past. But what's interesting to me is that in a year where we really are talking about 2025 being the time that companies start experimenting with agents, mainstream media is already picking it up that this is a major theme. Part of why this matters is that most people in big companies, much to my chagrin, are not so up to speed that they're listening to something like the AI Daily Brief. They're getting their news from sources like the Wall Street Journal. And so when this style of publication starts taking this stuff seriously, it can have a pretty big impact. So what we're going to do today is briefly look through these five use cases that the WSJ covered, and I'm going to pair that with an overview of a recent paper from Google that I think might be a pretty useful resource as well. The Wall Street Journal piece basically points out that this is a big trend. They describe how many different companies have officially announced their own agents, and they point out one of the biggest reasons, frankly, that enterprises are so focused on agents. Quote, if these agents work as promised, they could also provide businesses with the return on investment they've been looking for out of generative AI. According to some corporate technology leaders, that means the ability to tie the technology to a reduction in the number of hours employees work, or even how many new people they need to hire. Basically, there is a priori ROI built in if agents actually work. Agents necessarily replace certain amounts of human labor and presumably do it at lower cost than the equivalent human time. Now, it's important to note that how companies use those cost savings and that increased productivity is going to dictate just how disruptive this is. If companies reinvest that human time into growing the business in other areas, I tend to think that this will be a phenomenal development for everyone. If, on the other hand, they just view it as a cost-cutting measure, well, that's a whole different kettle of fish. But the real thrust of this Wall Street Journal piece is to try to figure out how agents are being used right now in reality. The first example they gave is from pharmaceutical giant Johnson & Johnson, who have been deploying drug discovery agents. Honing in on what agents can and can't do, the article points out that these agents aren't yet up to the task of coming up with new drugs all by themselves. Instead, they're deployed to optimize key points in the drug synthesis process. Traditionally, drug manufacturing is refined by running a multitude of experiments, which often have multiple variables to adjust. Agents are able to take the data from a smaller number of experiments and extrapolate it out to arrive at an optimal method. At this stage, employees are still reviewing the output of agents, but they write, the company is still figuring out how that oversight can be done more systematically. Next up, we move over to the world of finance, where financial analysis firm Moody's has developed a team of agents to research public company filings and perform industry comparisons. In total, the firm has 35 different agent designs, all trained for different subtasks and linked up together in a multi-agent system. The system even has agents as supervisors to check for hallucinations. The novel idea here is that each agent has its own set of instructions, personality, and data access. This means the agents within the system can come up with different conclusions in their analysis, which are then synthesized together. For example, one agent might be building their analysis based on industry competition data, while another might be focused on geopolitical risk. Nick Reed, the company's chief product officer, said, It's almost a bit like your ability as an individual person. What we worked out is that an agent is better at not multitasking. This is obviously a highly relevant conclusion, even if this just represents the current state of things in terms of how enterprises think about deploying agents. Rather than trying to have one agent do multiple things, companies might get better results by assigning multiple agents with narrow subtasks and finding ways to coordinate them, once again, possibly with agents. The thinking is not ultimately dissimilar to the way you would construct a team of humans to carry out a multidisciplinary task. eBay is engaged in one of the most popular agent use cases, writing code. Interestingly, eBay actually built its own agent framework that can take advantage of several different LLMs. In addition to writing code, eBay's agents are also creating marketing campaigns, and they're planning on rolling out another set of agents that can help buyers find items, as well as helping sellers list goods. The journal writes, eBay's agent framework functions as an orchestrator, dictating which AI models will be used for certain tasks like translating code and suggesting code snippets. Next up is Deutsche Telekom, and rather than facing outward, their agents are facing inward. The company employs roughly 80,000 workers across Germany. They've trained agents now to answer employee questions about internal policies and benefits. They also have an agent trained to assist service staff with questions about the company's products and services. In this case, we might be pushing the boundaries of the language of agent. 
This sort of sounds ultimately like a chatbot that has access to internal databases. Still, call it what you want, it seems to be getting a lot of traction. The company's chief product and digital officer, Jonathan Abramson, said that about 10,000 employees are using it each week. That is dramatically more efficient than having an HR specialist or having employees search for policies on an internal website. Still, Deutsche Telekom is figuring out how to go farther. The company's next step is allowing the agent to execute requests on behalf of employees, further automating basic HR. The example given was allowing the agent to complete a request for leave and enter it into the HR system, all fully automated from a natural language text prompt. The final example is, I believe, at this stage, the most commonly deployed agent example. In this case, it came from Spanish company Constantino, who manufacture countertops and other stone materials for buildings. The company has brought on a team of agents to fill in gaps for their customer service staff. They refer to the agents as a digital workforce and are thinking about them in a very similar way to human workers. The agents are expected to have basic skills but receive training when they begin work. Agents are given instructions to follow a strict process, and supervisors are present to ensure they don't go off the rails. The so-called digital staff have replaced the work of three to four team members who were previously involved in clearing customer orders. Those people have now been reassigned to more high-touch areas of customer service, liberated from their data entry tasks. Now, like I said, all of these are fairly basic use cases, but that I think represents where we are. I do believe that 2025 is going to be a huge year for agent pilots, and many of them are going to fall into some of these areas described and articulated in this piece. Now, one useful resource for figuring out how to implement agents in your workforce is a white paper published by Google last September simply titled Agents. The paper explains what agents are and what they require to function, but more importantly suggests that companies shouldn't think about agents as an upgrade to existing technology. Instead, they should think about agents as a fundamental shift in the way organizations operate in order to see maximum gains in efficiency and productivity. Basically, the first big idea in the paper is that agents are more than just smarter LLMs. The core agentic function is being able to access other systems. This could mean simply accessing a database to inform an output, but the possibilities go so much deeper. It's possible, for example, to integrate agents into real-time data feeds to inform autonomous decision-making. Agents have much greater ability to process data than a human. We will likely find agents are able to monitor and take actions based on multiple data sources that would have required an entire team of people to carry out. Google's paper discusses another big difference between LLMs and agents, the ability to reason through multi-step tasks. There are many different architectures that could be used to achieve this. The agent could use chain of thought, an iterative process of reassessing the task as it progresses based on new information revealed at each step. It could use a tree of thoughts where multiple possible solutions are explored at the same time. Ultimately, according to the paper, this makes agents capable of managing uncertainty and complexity in ways that traditional models can't. There's a ton of really interesting information in here. I will link to it in the show notes. And of course, one quick shill here if you've made it this far. You've probably been hearing this ad, but one of the things that we were doing at Super this year is an agent readiness audit where we are digging in with you to help you understand what parts of your company or your workforce's activities are best suited for exploring agents. And we're also helping scope and even support pilots in that area. If that's something you're interested in, email me at nlw at bsuper.ai and join this 2025, the year of agents. For now, though, that is going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief. Until next time, peace.